good evening YouTube. So I unloaded, actually it turned out to be a drop and hook over in, uh, I thought it was going to be Orfield and then it, they sent me to Allentown. Uh, so it, even though they had the Orfield address is what uh, came across my Qualcomm. The, when I got there the place said, oh you got to go to Allentown. So it was about, I don't know, another 12 miles away. And so it was a drop and hook, and then once I got there, and I did the drop and hook, then I'll be darned if, uh, you know, I sent the empty message, and uh, they came back, you know, the, the computer came back and said, well, sorry, that trailer's not available. And, uh, <laughs> you know, I was going by the trailer number. Well, you know, yes it is, because I've got it. You know, here's the trailer number. I've got it. And then the guy said, uh, sent a message back a little later saying that, well, let's hook to a truck in Connecticut. Are you sure that's the right number? Please check again and then send me the tag number off of the trailer, which I did. And then I, I don't know if it was uh, probably another guy came back and said, well, I need the tag number off the trailer. Well, I already sent it. Here it is again. Here's the trailer number. And they finally got it resolved. So I was able to send the empty message. Uh, so then now I'm picking a load up uh, at uh, Bridgeton, New Jersey. And then that load delivers uh, on the uh, afternoon of the 15th in Shelbyville, Tennessee. So right now I've... Uh, I came over to Bordentown, New Jersey, because that's really sort of the, I don't know, it's kind of the closest truck stop that had a truck wash. So I came over here, there's a Petro truck stop that has a Blue Beacon truck wash in it. So I came over here and I got the trailer washed out because it needed washed out. And then uh, the place where I'm picking the load up at in Bordentown, New Jersey, does not have a... Uh, overnight parking and so it's I think it's about 69 miles from here it's supposed to be there at 7 a.m. in the morning so I'll just I'll get up early in the morning and uh, drive on over there uh, so I've got uh, today's uh, 12th so tomorrow's the 13th and then so I've got the 13th 14th and then part of the day on the 15th to get there to Shelbyville I think I have to look I think that's not too far from Nashville, if I'm not mistaken. I might be wrong, but uh, it's a little over 800 miles from here. So anyway, I hope that wind, that wind noise isn't too bad. I don't know. Periodically, it, it starts kind of blowing, and then other times it's uh, pretty calm. So you can see this is the area behind where I'm parked, and you can see that... Uh, it's actually uh, quite messy. There's a broom there someone thrown, has thrown out. You see plastic bottles and all kinds of things that people have uh, tossed out. And uh, I don't know, I, that always, I always find that pretty irritating when people do that at a truck stop. They'll throw things out. And uh, some truck stops will clean the stuff up. This one obviously isn't. They're not even bothering because you can see the stuff is, uh, if you look back in the back there towards that fence, I don't know how well that fence is showing up in the video that's back there, but if you look back there, there's a lot of stuff that's uh, sort of drifted to the back over the years. And I guess that stuff is just left there to maybe eventually it biodegrades or not. And so this Petro truck stop that I'm uh, spending the night at here in Bordentown, New Jersey, uh, is one of the uh, relatively few remaining truck stops that is able to charge for parking. Uh, there are some truck stops, they're mostly in uh, areas where the uh, they can kind of get away with uh, 
charging for parking and the reason that most of the time the, the only reason they can is because uh, the parking might be you know their parking here of course is is more secure uh, or the parking might be limited uh, so you they can kind of get away with that here on the in this part of New Jersey at least this Petro can there are other truck stops that uh, don't charge for parking but of course their parking lots end up being full the problem you have is people that are uh, local drivers will park their trucks and truck stops in uh, more densely populated areas they'll park because they don't have any other place to park their truck at and so they'll park their truck in a truck stop and someone comes and picks them up and so that's that's so if a truck stop like this starts charging for parking, then uh, I'm sure, you know, if they want to pay to park, then they'll let them do it. Uh, but so typically, now I don't know how much they charge here. I'm assuming it's probably about $12 per night. However, uh, in this case, if you spend $40, uh, they'll go ahead and waive the parking charge. So I... I've spent more than that, actually. I ate in the restaurant. I bought uh, something in the uh, the uh, their store. Uh, I also got the trailer washed out. That the, there's a blue beacon truck wash that's inside the perimeter of the truck stop, so uh, uh, that should suffice. And if that's not enough, then I also got sixty dollars worth of uh, reefer fuel. So. Uh, that should more than cover the parking, uh, but uh, there in many areas, uh, there, there was a, I don't know, it's been a number of years ago now, truck stops all across the country decided, hey, we can start charging for parking. That really never went over very well, and, and most of them ended up dropping that after just a few months because it, uh, in most areas of the country, they they were just chasing their uh, customers away so but there are some remaining areas where uh, they can charge there's a few truck stops here and there there's the there's actually one in West Memphis a Petro truck stop charges for parking and it's the only one uh, somehow they they're able to do it uh, but the, even though they have lots of competing truck stops, they had, there are several other competing truck stops, but there's so many trucks that go through there, they're able to charge for it. And I think that uh, probably, you know, the people aren't actually, pay, you know, there are drivers probably aren't really paying for the, to park there. Uh, they're probably buying fuel or they're buying enough other stuff so that uh, that covers the cost of uh, parking. Uh, you know, sort of, so they have to waive the fee, but it does kind of, uh, at least in the case of that Petro, I'm sure it keeps the people from uh, just that live around the Memphis area from just parking their truck at that Petro truck stop because they do park it. You know, I've seen them, there's a Flying J and there's a pilot, uh, a couple of pilots actually, or a pilot and a Loves. And in those truck stops, people do park their trucks, even, you know. Uh, so you have, <laughs> that's, that's always an ongoing problem. So, but uh, I don't know, but I've got the, the parking fees kind of covered here. And so I'll have to get up in the morning at, uh, I'm gonna set my alarm probably for around uh, maybe 4 a.m. or so, four a, somewhere around 4 a.m. or maybe 4.30. Try to get out of here by, uh, Five or a little bit after, you know, and I'm going to allow at least uh, try to allow an hour and a half. Uh, I've got about uh, what did I say, 69 miles to go, and so at that time of the morning, I sh it should go pretty quickly, and I should uh, should be able to get to the appointment. Uh, it's at 7 a.m. Uh, so it should I should be able to get there fairly quickly, uh, you know, probably within an hour and 15 minutes. Uh, but I'll allow enough extra time just in case. So uh, in any in any case, from uh, Borden, 
Uptown, New Jersey. I'll catch you later.